Hey, what's up everyone? Sam in the studio and thanks for coming on and checking out my YouTube channel and I am just excited to be creating a bunch of new content and one of the things that definitely is a question that gets asked all the time as people are looking at just the music that I've been working on recently, the stuff I'm putting out with co-writers and getting pitched to television shows and film and ads and stuff like that is how do you do your co-writes, how do you collaborate? And I think this is a great question. One of my co-writers, Mark and I, have been doing music now for the last year or two, and we've really developed a system where we're able to co-write and put out song after song. So now with Mark, it happens really different ways. Sometimes I start on something, he starts on something, but many times what it really starts with is a need. Like what people are looking for out there um, that they would use for television shows or movies or ads, like knowing that and then working on tracks that work for licensing and sync. So that's really our goal is we're trying to write music that could be useful to someone else in a visual or on the other side. So today I just wanted to hop on my computer and show you how I might start a song and get it going for Mark to be able to write to. Now, before I jump in and show you kind of what I'm gonna do production-wise in here, um, I will say that a lot of the time for us, it starts off with a reference, having a good reference. Now, for this particular song, I'm not gonna show you the reference because I don't want the video to get pulled off of YouTube, but I'll just say that we found a reference and it's got a really simple intro that's got some really cool O's to it and it's got a drum part and acoustic guitar. It's kind of driven by an acoustic guitar and then it builds, builds, builds as the song goes off to uh, eventually just be a big chorus. So let's look here and kind of see what I've done. So the first thing you're gonna notice here in Pro Tools um, is that I brought in the reference track I blanked it out so you don't know what that reference track is unless you can read those waveforms and tell, but I'm just gonna say that you probably don't know what that track is, um, but you can see that I've actually mapped out this track. When I first brought it in and zoomed in, let's, let me show you this. You can see these hits right here. That is four on the floor kick. Just boom, boom, boom. Actually, the more I really listened to it and started to, to get my sounds over here on the keyboard, um, I realized I think it's kick and a tom hitting at the same time. So now see these lines right here? Those are quarter notes. Um, or is those eighth notes? Let's look and I see what, those are half notes. Okay, let's go to quarter notes. Now you see my grid is matching quarter notes and that lines up. So when I first came into this new Pro Tools session, um, I, uh, let's see, it defaults, oops, that's not what I want. It defaults to uh, 120 is what Pro Tools kind of opens up to. And you can see right away, look at this. See how those lines don't seem to quite, they're getting further and further away. So what did I do? I just clicked on here and I went 118. Let's see what that does. Oh, that brought them a little closer, but they're still getting further away. So you can see I actually went in and matched um, this so that I could kind of use this as a guide, as a template to kind of follow along. Now, hopefully when I'm done and Mark writes to it, we're gonna have some differences here that you would not be able to put these two songs together. We are not gonna copy this song note for note. We're just using it as a reference. And brings me to the next thing that I wanted to bring up, is as I'm building this song, I want you to notice something. I am all, if you look at right here on instrument tracks, and I've just kind of laid out for myself drums, bass, acoustic, electric, synth, piano, horns. So really simply, I'm going through and kind of using this as a guide, and the more I get to working on our song, I will listen less to the guide track, and more I was just using that for modeling uh, the way the song breaks down, the energy of the song, like how it steps up as it goes along. It's just a reference, it's just a guide for me. But I'm really breaking it down, um, and so you can see that's how I'm doing this. So first thing I might do here is try to match this intro. I'm just gonna go through the intro. I can't play it for you, but it's got some vocal O's, and it's got acoustic guitar and some drums. It's really simple. So I'm gonna highlight that, and also you can see right off the bat here, I've set the quantization. So quantize means it's going to lock what I play right here kind of to the grid. So let me go ahead and record, let's see here. So I'm listening to the kick. So here's my toms. 
So I'm listening for a tom, because I want it to have that tom sound. So it's whether I want to go with that mid middle tom or the lower tom. And the beauty of MIDI is once I record this, I can always go back and change the tom if as I get the acoustic and everything else going if it, if it doesn't match. Okay, so right here on my console, I have it set up to give me four counts of click. And so I'm gonna hit play and record on here. And I'm gonna record just four bars. Okay, so and let's play that back and see what we got. And you can see, just because of the human touch of it, it's kind of got some element of dynamics in it. But really, much of this initial recording may even get swapped out anyways. So this may never make it to the final end version of the song. And I also know, and you can even see from this waveform, that that four on the floor kick goes all the way to this pre-chorus right here. So I'm just gonna copy, actually I'm gonna use Control D for duplicate, and I'm gonna go all the way to there, and on this reference song, it starts off with the guitar playing one chord. There's really no switches on it, and sometimes simplest always just makes for a really cool thing. Now, having done this so many times and working with Mark, I kinda know where his vocal range is, once we start writing many times, Mark will reach back to me and say, hey, can that go up a step or down a step or maybe to a totally different key? Or can it go a couple clicks faster, a couple clicks slower? So that brings me up to something that I really wanted to say. This is like an important part of this is the reason why I don't start grabbing guitar and playing all this and I'm kind of using MIDI for all of this to initially write the song is because I'm working quick and I would rather not re-record stuff if Mark needs stuff adjusted. So the beauty of MIDI and all of this and Pro Tools is that I can kind of do all of this and if Mark wants it raised up a key, a step, um, I can grab all the MIDI notes and, and move them up. It's super simple to do. So next, I'm also using another contact. I kind of went very simple with contact straight across the board. And this is a strummed acoustic. So now what I'm gonna do is, I know that's my tempo, and I'm just gonna use simple key of C. Okay, so that's not quite the, the, the pattern that I was going, I'm thinking ever going for. And that's not quite it either. So I'm gonna go through and look at not campfire. Mm. Mm, getting there close. No, not rock. No, not offbeat. No. Hmm. Okay, so I kind of like that. So that has a sound of kind of driving, and I kind of like the little breaks that they've put in there. So some of this stuff, as I record it, and I go to start recreating the song once Mark's top line and written uh, his part to it, sometimes I will actually use some of the patterns, but I'll probably put up some mics and re-record it with a real acoustic guitar. But just for right now, I think this is gonna work for just kind of building this track in the creative stage. So let me go ahead and So that was really simple. I, don't, I may switch around and play with that here. I don't know if that's the exact one that I wanna keep. Um, let's see, that didn't record. I think I played it too late. Let me look at this again. Uh, let me go back to this one. I think I like that better. Okay, so here we go. So now I have that initial uh, acoustic guitar and part to this track. Um, again, it's gonna quantize it here and kind of line all this stuff up. And I'm gonna make this go into the verse part. Now, in the reference song, it stays on one chord and then it goes uh, on the and before the next round, it goes to another chord. I think it's the fifth and it goes lower. So it goes the one chord, 
back to that chord and back up to it again. So at some point I start to make creative decisions of whether how close I want to stick to that and I might do something totally different. So for right now, let's just listen to this. I got uh Now, um, I have this all set up again for, let's say, bass guitar. I can open this up and I got kind of a Rickenbacker bass going here and I can arm that track and I could... I could put a bass line. You know, I could do whatever I want with a bass in there and it's gonna need a bass line as the song gets to building, but there's no bass in the beginning. Uh, next, I also have just an electric guitar track set up. Um, now this one uh, is also gonna have some strumming things. Let's see what this uh, sounds like here. Now that's pretty rock. Um, I don't know if that's the sound I want. So what's beautiful about these uh, Native Instruments um, plugins is this that you can go do so many different things. Ah, now that's something kind of cool. That could actually go in there right off the top maybe even a little bit. That kind of matches that acoustic guitar. Let's see what the two of them sound like together. And if I don't even want to record it, I can just grab uh, these, copy, paste them in. Uh, come on. No. Okay. Let's see. So that's already got kind of a driving thing and I'm thinking Mark will add into there the woes of oh, 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 whatever his vocal line he thinks of. Then after that I have a synth because I heard a cool high energy synth sound uh, in the chorus. Now I haven't gotten to build a chorus yet but just to show you kind of what I got set up here. Um, I have synth sound and um, I've been playing with this one a lot lately. It's called Analog Dreams. Um, and if I go, uh, let's see, it might be under pads that I'm looking at. Um, and something, uh, uh, let's see, not dark. Um, I would have to go through these pads and kind of see. Okay, that's got like an extra note in there, but there's a lot of cool things you can do with these um, pads. So I could quickly rifle through those and see um, if any of these. It was a real bright shimmery pad that was in the reference track. So, um, and that was only on the chorus and the hook and up high to kind of give it some high um, energy. Um, a lot of times I will use pianos in there too. Um, this is a piano I like to go to sometimes. It just got like a nice sound so that's a piano that I definitely would maybe put some big octave hits in on a song like this and then the reference song way in the background on the chorus had some horn lines so the song got to go in and then it had some good breaks and then it had a pre-chorus it just broke down and then came in with a big line and a very simple hook and I could hear in the background some ba -da -dun -da -dun. Dun, 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 some kind of like horn line kind of buried underneath the kind of uh, acoustic guitar and the percussive elements and the band rocking away. So on that, I'm gonna again go to Contact. They have this uh, Session Horns Pro. So I can uh, play out a line or they even have um, an animator in here that'll give me phrases. <laughs> So I'm not sure that's the exact, I would have to again rifle through and kind of see, but all of that to say, this kind of system is set up to not make a finished product right off the bat. It's to work quickly at songwriting to a reference track and to try to build something that can give the same kind of energy and build and feel that a song that they would be looking for goes to and works towards. So. Hope that helps. This is just kind of one way that I would set up a track. I would kind of go through and play out all these parts and come up with a track. And then once I had that, working really quick, sometimes I only take 30 minutes to an hour to kind of build out a track and come up with these ideas. Then I send it to Mark and we look at what are some themes or something this song has a feel of that could work well for a TV show or a movie or advertisement. So that's really how we go about our co-writing and going back and forth. And then once Mark hears it and hears the reference, and sometimes we look at some other references thematically, 
then he might come up with a good idea and top line it. Hopefully in the future I can get Mark to do a video showing kind of how he top lines these tracks. In fact, maybe even I can finish this one right here and he can do a little video on kind of like as we've gone back and forth, like what he hears and how it made him feel and how he came about to the lyrics that he might write over a track like this. So that's what I got. I'm gonna keep adding to this and hopefully I'll make another YouTube video that'll kind of show maybe um, where the track's gone and Mark's top line vocals and how I'm starting to like work those in. So stay tuned, give an ad, like, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can catch the next ones. Sam at Earwitness Studios, thank you for watching.